Ready, ready? Yeah. Good. And action. Okay. Now I'd like to talk about uh, loops in arch wires. Uh, loops can be used for a number of factors. The most common is to close spaces. If you have uh, stubborn extraction spaces that are not responding to conventional sliding mechanics, uh, then by putting a loop in the wire and activating the loop, you find you get very effective space closure. The other loops that uh, are used are for intrusion. You can see this wire here is called a mushroom loop wire. And uh, you can place a bend such that one part of the wire lies higher than the other. So when that engages the incisors, for instance, the differential um, will give you intrusion of the incisors. Most mushroom loop wires are used for class two elastics, and I'll kind of explain why. One of the disadvantages of class two elastics is they tend to detork the upper incisors, and they tend to extrude the incisors. So if you use a mushroom loop wire uh, with class two elastics, when the elastic goes on the anterior part of the loop, it actually has this effect on the wire. And that effect on the wire is actually giving you torque. So it's counteracting the unwanted uh, loss of torque with the class two elastic. Plus, I find these are much easier for children to hook elastics on compared to the little posts and hooks where when they're eating with elastics, they tend to uh, slide off. Now, the disadvantage of buying the mushroom loop wire preformed is you need to keep a large inventory because the inter-canine distance will vary from patient to patient. So I can show you how to uh, bend one of these, uh, and then we can show you how to activate one of these. Right? So let's say I've done a four bicuspid extraction case, which would be very common in someone who has bidental protrusion, uh, who has lip incompetence, and I want to retract their incisors uh, en masse. I would put my bend either in the middle of the extraction space or at the end of the extraction space based on what type of anchorage I want to achieve. The book by Ravi Nanda, uh, Clinical Biomechanics, explains that if a loop is placed in the middle of the extraction, you tend to close the space half and half, half by the molars coming forward, half by the incisors coming back, type B anchorage control. What we're after is type A anchorage control. And in that regard, this loop is tend to placed at the back of the extraction socket. Yeah? So you mark where the loop will be placed. And then, using again a uh, jaraback or a half round plier, we're able to place our bends. And every time you place a bend, it's important to ensure that you haven't introduced an unwanted bend. So again, after each bend, the wire is placed back on the table to make sure it's flat. The depth of the loop is really based on the patient's sulcus. If you make the loop too high, you're going to get a lot of gingival irritation. But if you make it too short, there's not enough flexibility. The more wire you can put into the loop, obviously, the greater the activation force will be. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to uh, make a, uh, a short loop which will allow me to close extraction spaces, and that's about the length there. Every time you bend, go back and make sure you haven't introduced any wanted, unwanted movement. Um, so now to actually organize the closing loop, you can see that's the first part of the bend. Uh, the second part of the bend is just repeating what we started. So on the other side, we now get our half round plier. And again, form the, the distal aspect of the loop. The distal aspect of the loop then again with the half round plier should be bent to match the anterior components, and that's the next bend. And then the last component again is the last 90 degree bend, which uh, I'm running out of wire here. This, this can be bent obviously in these preformed wires, but the problem with preformed wires is they don't give you a lot of extra wire because they're not really designed for bending loops. The wire that we use for bending loops is normally a straight length, so we do the loop first and then we can bend the arch form um, around there. Again, here you can see it's not parallel, so we need to go back in and take some of that bend out. 
and then the last component, which is the important component to make sure that that is in the same plane, is a 90 degree bend again. Now, for this to work, activation is to grab the end of the wire, pull it through the molar tube, and then bend it 90 degrees behind the molar and you can see the activation. So the wire will want to naturally return back to its original position and that closes space very, very effectively. The other indication for using one of these loops, let's just say you are wanting to get bodily movement off a cuspid. Um, cuspids, normally the forces are placed on the clinical crown and as a result they tend to tip back. To get bodily movement, you need to put your forces near the center of resistance, which is normally two-thirds up the root of the tooth. So you can bend one of these loops to be close to the center of resistance. And that way, when you activate the loop, you can get um, the canine coming back bodily rather than um, uh, tipping. Uh, you could put a micro-implant in a situation here, and you can then attach a core spring from that micro-implant to this loop, which will also make sure your pull is going to be parallel to the center of, of resistance. So uh, loops are bent in TMA wire or beta titanium wire. Um, in this sort of situation, you'd want to use uh, a 1925 in an 022 slot because you don't want to um, have a lot of slop in that wire. Uh, if you use a round wire, you'll get a lot of play and increase the chance of tipping. So uh, a 2125, of course, would be too rigid and there wouldn't be enough slide. So a 1925 beta titanium or TMA wire, or CNA wire, is the sort of uh, ideal wire for you to make these loops and activate them. And the same way I've bent that loop uh, to close the space, again, you can imagine if I bent that loop in the area off the cuspid, that could be my mushroom wire. With mushroom wires, the other aspect that's important is the concept of the curve of speed. You would normally need to wipe in and increase curve of speed, such as that. When you wipe in and increase curve of speed, that will give you some anti... Um, uh, uh, it, it will stop you losing torque. So depending on how much torque you've achieved, you can either just use the elastics to the mushroom or you can use your mushroom wire with an increased curve of speed that will counteract, when the elastic is worn, uh, the loss of torque.